the FA is completely lacking in courage to speak out against human rights abuses in Qatar and has not set up the briefings for our England players which it promised, Amnesty International declared on Tuesday after a sports mail investigation into the scandal of young Nepalese workers who have died while working to prepare Qatar for the World Cup. The human rights group said the governing body was running downtime on calling out the plight of workers and didn't want the FA, which indicated in December that Gareth Southgate's players would be briefed on Qatar by external speakers including Amnesty, claimed that the players had been briefed by AMP, but the organization responded to say that FA was playing with semantics. They said their understanding is that a briefing of Southgate's players took place in merely using Amnesty. We have never been to Wembley or anywhere else to provide a briefing to players. They only have to say the word and we will be there next week, said a senior Am Peter Frankendall, Amnesty International UK's Economic Affairs Programme Director, told Sports Mill. A number of half promises have been made through the media about human rights groups briefing, but no request has been made to us or any other organization. Several meetings between Amnesty and the FA have taken place and there has been contact with the organization's research. But Mr. Frankendall said, those meetings have not been particularly constructive. It's not that individuals from the FA are not interested, but we feel the FA, as a matter of policy, are reluctant to call out these via. It's a softly, softly approach, to avoid sending the wrong message to FIFA. Qatar and the other key players. But 12 years after the World Cup was awarded, we would expect them to be much more engaged in human rights abuses and taking a stance, like we have found the Netherlands, Norway and Denmark have. They seem to be completely lacking in courage when it comes to taking any steps. Sports Mail's investigation established that 239 Nepalese workers died in Qatar in a 12-month period from 2020 to 2021 alone. And that is just the number whose families have applied for those aged 25 to 35 form the largest category. We discovered meaningless death certificates issued for young World Cup stadium workers, without post-mortems to establish why their health had actually deteriorated so catas Amnesty welcomed out investigation and said football could make a huge difference by wielding its influence. But the FA signed a memorandum of understanding with Qatar in 2018 and its chief executive Mark Bullingham claimed last year that migrant workers in the World Cup host nation were fully behind the world that astonished human rights group stopped by contrast, Denmark's sponsors will undertake no commercial activity in Qatar during the World Cup and not have their names on the team's train. The Danish players will wear human rights messages when they train. Liverpool FC elicited details about the death of one of the victims we featured, Rup Chandra Rumba, when they demanded answers from the Qatar World Cup Supreme Committee. Before playing in Doha's 2019 club, it proved how football can make a difference. Sports Mail put the findings of our investigation to FIFA. We asked if the governing body would take the phony death certificate issue up with Qatar and its Supreme Committee, on the basis of what we have written. FIFA said in a statement that it was implementing an unprecedented due diligence process in relation to the protection of workers involved in the FIFA World Cup Qatar 20. There are many other cases. Beyond those sports mail highlighted. Sujan Lopkin's family was initially told informally that the 30 year old insulation worker had died because of alcohol intake, when his death certificate stated acute respiratory failure for further investigation. He used to drink but not that much, said his bewildered brother Ganesh. We have received no compensation for his life except his outstanding salary and allow. Amnesty and other human rights groups have written collectively to the FA this week asking them to support the idea of a £350 million FIFA compensation fund for workers and a migrant workers organization. The FA said last night that it was in dialogue with human rights organizations such as Amnesty International and felt from those discussions that there is evidence of substantial progress being made by Qatar in relation to workers. It recognized there is still more to be done.